were the preferred targets of hidden terrorism by the armed resistance. Taxi drivers, street vendors, mailmen, especially civil functionaries, were innocent victims of acts that went from simple assassination to gratuitous barbarity. Their throats were slashed, mutilated, cut into pieces, thrown into street corners or public trash cans. These acts of atrocity were then exploited by the media to impute the responsibility to the government forces. We were taken by surprise ourselves by this tactic during a visit to Holmes. A man had just been attacked by part of the armed gangs because he refused to close his shop. His car was blown up and he was literally hacked to pieces and tossed under the storefront window. At the moment we were coming by, passers-by opened their mobile phones and were filming, and we overheard one of them say, doubtless talking to one of the satellite TV networks, this is what Syrian citizens endure at the hands of Bashar al-Assad's death squads. We photographed this event. We then proceeded to take the body of this poor killed man to the hospital. Instead of bringing help to the murdered person, the onlookers filmed it, getting Al Jazeera to believe that the state had perpetrated the crime. Saudi Arabia and other Persian Gulf monarchies and emirates provide an estimated 500 billion a year to radical Salafi networks, including the various Al-Qaeda groupings that are engaged in violent destabilizations, including the ongoing armed rebel operations in Syria. In recent weeks, these funds have facilitated a flow of weapons and paid foreign mercenaries into Syria via bordering countries, including Iraq, Lebanon, and Turkey. The concentration of black market weapons along the Syrian borders is unprecedented. Arms traffickers are becoming millionaires overnight. Saudi Arabia and other Gulf states are bankrolling the recruitment, arming, and deployment of Sunni mercenaries who are being sent into Syria to fight against the Assad government and the Syrian security forces. Russia on Syria. Experts have little confidence the Arab League and United Nations peace plan initiated by Special Envoy Kofi Annan will actually result in a... It was on February 2012 that Kofi Annan was appointed UN Arab League Special Envoy to Syria in an attempt to stop the violence. A month later, his six-point peace plan was submitted to the United Nations, traveling on the 24th of March to Moscow to secure strong Russian support for the effort. Point two of the plan, before any other steps could take place, demanded a ceasefire on the part of both the opposition fighters and the Syrian regime. But Kofi Annan should have been told, you are dealing with a third element, not two. A third force, void of national loyalty, distilled from three key players, Saudi Arabia, the UK, and the United States. The Anon plan isn't failing. It is under attack. When you see a lot of money in Syria, then you believe, I believe that Saudis. The shadow of Syria now, is a military operation. It means weapons and military operations. It means weapons and military ليه لأنه النظام مدعوم أصلا دوليا ومدعوم من قبل إسرائيل أصلا. We are completely against arming the uprising 
as well as we are against foreign intervention. We declared that very clear, very loud. Left unspoken by the British and Obama administration anti-Syrian regime chorus is the fact that their highly praised Gulf partner, the monarchical government of Saudi Arabia, not only has expressed the desire to arm the rebellion, but desire Olivia repeat. Few have exposed or accused not only that they intended, but already are and in fact have been funding terrorist networks now said to have infiltrated the region before the uprising ever occurred to the tune of $500 billion a year. Left unspoken, not out of ignorance, but out of an unofficial commitment to a global imperial agenda in place since September 11, 2001. I want to welcome uh, His Majesty uh, King Abdullah to the White House. إذا علم أنه سيصل إلى هؤلاء وصولا جيدا بأمانة ودقة فلا شك إن شاء الله أنه جهاد في سبيل الله لأن ما قوى شوكة هؤلاء وأضعف شوكة هؤلاء مطلوب شرعا During the uprising, Saudi Arabia and the Gulf neighbors said to be hiring mercenaries to operate in Syria have since established refugee camps within Turkey's borders. Through their Islamic Relief Agency and with Saudi army medical staff, they have been operating these camps with assistance by Turkish authorities. What goes on inside these camps? Almost no one can verify. International organizations are not allowed to enter them as they are prevented by Turkish authorities. The argument is that the refugees are not under refugee status. They are guests and therefore not covered by international refugee conventions. What goes on within these camps, therefore, is the business of the Saudis, some Turks, their guests, no one else. In the same day the Saudi Arabia's Grand Mufti, Al-Ashik, preached jihad for sake of Allah against the Syrian government, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, in a meeting in Riyadh with his Jordanian counterpart, proposed negotiations with the Jordanian king to permit weapons shipments into Syria in exchange for economic assistance. Publicly, the exchange was said not to have been accepted though a Jordanian official commented that the position was unlikely to remain, saying, We are a non-interventionist country, but if it becomes force majeure, you have to join. Well, I think that it is pretty clear that the rebels have been receiving, receiving arms from abroad, and Syrian television has been showing almost daily shipments of arms being smuggled into Syria uh, via Lebanon, uh, Turkey, and other uh, border crossings. نحن منذ البداية رفضنا التدخل في الشأن الداخلي لسوريا لأن التدخل السوري والتدخل الخارجي في الشؤون السورية. لن يخدم سوريا لا حكومة ولا شعبا التدخل الخارجي سيزيد من تعقيد الأزمة لذلك قلنا أن الحوار هو الحل الوحيد كمخرج للأزمة السورية نحن عندما رأينا موقف روسيا كان موقفا حكيما موقف الصين لأن فعلا التدخل الخارجي ولنا أمثلة كثيرة في المنطقة عندنا أمثلة كثيرة في المنطقة إلى أين أدى التدخل الخارجي العسكري في شؤون دول هل أدى إلى الاستقرار هل لغاية الآن في أفغانستان بعد مرور أكثر من عشر سنوات 
هل ستب الاستقرار والأمن في أفغانستان؟ أبدا Few have dared to come forward under the condition of anonymity, warning that the Saudis are beyond negotiations and public annunciations for jihad against Syria. They are, in fact, working behind the shadows they themselves cast to feed the conflict, sabotaging Anand's peace effort. A top Arab diplomat revealed in publications on March 17th that Saudi Arabia was in the process of delivering equipment to rebel fighters in an effort to militarily overpower the Syrian army. The weapons would be traveling through Jordan, where it was admitted later that Saudi King Abdullah in fact did discuss with the King of Jordan. Later, a Western diplomat in Ankara, Turkey, stepped forward and leaked that rebel fighters are being armed by Saudi Arabia and their Gulf state neighbor Qatar. The diplomat disclosed, though at first, anti-regime activists only smuggled small quantities of light weapons purchased on the black market in Hatay of southern Turkey and brought to Syria's Idlib province. As of late May 2012, the loose assortment of rebel groups had received multiple shipments of arms that included AK-47s, BKC machine guns, rocket-propelled grenades, and anti-tank weaponry from the monarchies of the Gulf. From Ankara, the Western official cautioned, Officially, no one will admit it. Nonetheless, the weapons provided by Saudi Arabia and Qatar are going through Turkey with Turkish intelligence units fully aware as they are responsible for vetting who is eligible to receive arms and who is not. A vetting procedure that both U.S. officials and Arab intelligence officers have informed journalists that a small number of CIA officers in southern Turkey are similarly involved in. All intersecting the unverified activities of Saudi Arabia's Islamic relief camp and their guests. للتطلعات والمطالب المشروعة للشعب السوري في الحرية والديمقراطية وحقه في رسم مستقبله واختيار حكامه وفي التداول السلم للسلطة إدانة أعمال العنف والقتل وإيقاف دزيف الدم والتمسك بالحل السياسي والحوار الوطني ورفض التدخل الأجنبي في الأزمة السورية التي تعيشها الشعوب العربية المنطقة العربية هنا فهو أن يساهم في الحفاظ على أراضيها وسيادتها الإقليم التي تعيشها الشعوب العربية لا أحد يريد الإضرار بسوريا ونحن نعم مع فكرة تسليح المعارضة التي تقاتل من أجل حريتها وحياتها Prince Saud al Faisal's declared duty was followed with his Qatar partners hosting an announcement by businessmen in the Qatari capital, the creation of a $300 million fund for the rebellion. Though announced in June, Wael Mirza, one of the sponsors of the fund, admitted that the fund had been established long ago for 